Your whole f***ing sport is gay f***. That's, that's the game. He's been waiting his whole life to go. <laughs> it looks like it tastes like chalk and dirt. And the minute some chick who wants to have sex with you goes, oh yeah, come to Germany. You're like, oh, let's go, dad. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 280 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I'm also joined by Rosie today. Hello. And uh, Bobby's on the floor. I assume she'll jump up on my lap at some point. Um, guys, uh, I announced last episode some sad news um, that uh, Keelan, while he was uh, on his trip in America, was brutally murdered. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for more information. Um, I've reached out to his family and some witnesses as well, and they've told me that it was very painful and he suffered for many hours. Um, but uh, the bright side of all of this is he actually was um, stabbed to death by a homeless person and I found out that uh, he was actually antagonising a lot of the homeless in the area and making fun of them for being poor and flashing money in front of them and saying, it's your fault you're on the street, I'm better than you. So as sad as it is that he has passed, at least he died doing what he loved. Um, so if you would like to pay your respects, please go over to his Instagram, uh, leave just some nice comments, some nice words, a favourite memory about Keelan uh, on his Instagram. Some rest in peace posts uh, would definitely be appreciated by uh, his family that he's left behind. Um, I also am hearing that uh, he, because he was suffering for many hours, he actually could have survived, but he refused to call an ambulance because he didn't get travel insurance and he didn't want to pay for it. So... Just a quick reminder, guys, to always get travel insurance when you travel uh, if you do plan on antagonising the homeless. Um, now, let's get into our first story of the day. Now, obviously, uh, you know, I'm a big rugby fan, okay? Um, I'm a huge rugby fan. Uh, as of a couple of days ago, when I found out about this story about rugby players uh, refusing to wear a jersey that had uh, a couple of gay pride rainbows on it, these rugby players... <laughs> Uh, Emotional Des, who's the coach of this team, apologises for club's significant mistake in Jersey Saga as more players boycott. So seven rugby players are refusing to play in an upcoming game because they want them to wear uh, some pride colours on their jersey. And now, obviously, a lot of people are upset about this because, you know, it's pretty, like, homophobic, right, uh, of going, oh, I'm, I'm not going to wear that, Right. But what I find funny about this is because it's rugby, uh, they're actually apologising to the players and going, oh, look, we're really, really sorry for putting some gay shit on your uniform and not consulting you. Really terribly sorry about that. I love that. That's so rugby is they've, they've come out and gone, instead of going, look, we're really sorry that some of our players uh, are so scared of the gays that they won't even wear something that references uh, their existence being okay. They're, they've actually turned around and gone, we'd like to apologise to all of the players for putting gay shit on our uniforms. <laughs> it's, so, it's so rugby. Can someone tell rugby players that they're playing the gayest sport in the country? You got, like, you don't need to put gay rainbows on your fucking uniform. You're doing it every day with your actions. How many times has a rugby player gotten in trouble for sticking his fingers up a player's ass? You're playing the objectively the gayest sport in the country, all right? Fuck, man. Lacrosse is less gay. There's, there, what you're doing is you're getting, like, like, a bunch of the biggest, burliest, hairiest men. And all right, boys, what we want you to do is run at each other full speed, wrestle around a little bit. And if you're really struggling to get that guy off the ball, chuck a couple of digits in his rectum. That'll help. I love how these players, what are these? What are the reasons? Why aren't they wearing the, the gay shit? What's going on? I want to hear their reason. Because you know it's not... Because here's the problem with asking for a rugby player's opinion. They're a rugby player, so it's most of the time going to sound like a go 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 go. Like they don't have brains because they've been running at each other full speed, sticking fingers in each other's ass, trying to pull out the last remaining brain cells out of their head through their ass. What have uh, we got? They're standing down on religious and cultural grounds. Right, religious and cultural grounds. But these guys will happily wear. Uh, gambling advertisements and alcohol advertisements and also play with a bunch of people that hit chicks. That's totally religiously fine, isn't it? Uh, because so if there's lame. one thing God loves, it's gambling 
and Ben's drinking. To be fair, God does like a little bit of hitting women. Like there's a, there's a bit of that going around. So I'll give them a pass on that. You know, if they're really going to play for religious reasons, I'll allow them to play with dudes who hit women because a lot of that stuff happens in the Bible. We've seen it, right? But the Bible's pretty clear about gambling and drinking. They're not a fan. So that's where the logic kind of falls apart there. You know, how many of these fucking dudes are rolling out? Like, a lot of these sports organizations have stakes in fucking gambling, which is so much worse for the nation than than dudes having sex, right? And let's be real, okay? They've come out and gone, oh, it's for religious reasons. It's not, okay? Let's say the real reason. The real reason is, oh, I don't want to wear any gay shit. That's your reason. That's fine. Say your real reason. You know, come out there and if you really want to stand up for your beliefs, just come out there and say your real reason, which is, oh, that's fucking gay. That's what, it's a reason. I'm not saying that it's a good reason, but it is your reason. Hmm. Don't come out there and, like, kneel on one knee pretending like you're God's warrior out there when you're, when you're just absolutely fucking plastered with gambling ads, with drinking ads, playing with a bunch of dudes that have, uh, you know, obviously are closeted gays as well. 100% that shit's going on in, the, in, in rugby league. A bunch of you guys are out there hitting women and you're going, oh, but I draw the line at gay shit. Your whole fucking sport is gay shit. That's, that's the game. You roll around in the mud with a bunch of burly dudes trying to grab balls. The one you're playing with and balls that are attached to other players because Lord knows it's hard to grab hold of something when someone's sticking fingers in your ass and pulling on your nuts. You're playing a gay game. And that's fine, but I would really appreciate a little bit of honesty from some of these rugby players. I, I, just, want, I just want one of you guys to come out and go, oh, I don't want to wear any gay shit. It's fucking gay. That's for the gays. Just say that. I would, re- I would respect you more if you just were like, ah, it's a little bit fucking gay, isn't it? I don't know about that. That being said, though, right, why is the rugby league wearing gay shit? What do they get out of that? Are there, ma- are there many, like, gay dudes out there that are like, oh, I, that, oh, I love rugby? Is, is that, maybe that's what they're trying to attract. They're trying to connect with the gay community. I mean, there's, there's got to be a bunch of gay women out there that love a bit of rugby. Mm. there's probably some playing in the league that we don't know about. We haven't noticed because all of their heads are kind of shaped the same because they just run into each other. What do we have here? Why are they, why are they wearing the, uh, the gay shit? Uh, the intent of the rainbow colour application of our jersey was to represent diversity and inclusion for all. Yeah. Utilising the symbolic colours of pride to embrace all groups who feel marginalised, face discrimination and have a suppressed share of voice. Right, right. Which is a good message. I th- yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's a good message, but have you, th- have you considered the fact that it's fucking gay, mate? Have you thought about that? You know, yeah. that's a, like I read that, ar- that argument and that sounds like quite a reasonable and also a virtuous argument, but then on the other hand, fucking gay shit. So I don't know where I stand. On the on those two like very compelling arguments, you know, it's like oh we need to we need to like welcome in all people into our sport and show that marginalised people and uh, people of all sexualities are welcome here, or uh, it's a bit fucking gay, isn't it? I don't know about that. People if I wear if I wear the rainbow, that makes me gay, <laughs> you know, which is something to consider. People that are homophobic in 2022, I consider uncool. Oh, that's a fucking burn, all right? If, mm. if you're homophobic in 2022, guess what? You're uncool. It's uncool. It's unpopular. Yeah, but being gay is fucking gay. So... <laughs> you're not going to win, Lewis. <laughs> I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Sorry, God's advocate. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just, just wear the gay shit. Yeah. I, I just think it's like, but also why, I also why is this whole fucking conversation coming into sport? There is a little part of me that's like, can we just play the fucking game? You know, can, can't we just like be good at the game and, and 
Like, don't be homophobic, but also why do we have to care about issues while, while we're watching our fucking thing? You know, like I always thought that whenever they they like stopped at half time to pay their respects to some national fucking tragedy that's happening in the country, and it's like, yeah, okay, that's bad, but also I want to. Part of the reason why I'm watching this is because I want to watch the game. Um, but that's also, you know, that's an opinion that I'm allowed to have because I'm a straight white guy, and I can just go, yeah, I don't really care about that. Hey, it doesn't really. Who gives a fuck about that shit? Um, you disagree? You think that it, that. Did I stop movies halfway through? We like we're pausing halfway through Avengers Endgame to remind you about genocide. Mm. <laughs> they only do it in sport. I don't do that at my show, guys. I know we've been having a lot of fun, but it's time to remember the bushfires. People would stop coming. It is annoying, <laughs> but also it's not what they're doing. They're just putting it on the yeah. uniform. I think they're wanting to become the first NRL club in history to run out the LGBTQIA kit. Right, and they've, it's never and been they've done failed before. miserably. Because yes. I guess, yeah, it's never been done before. And for this reason, because I guess the big secret is a lot of these rugby boys are like, yeah, that, that gay shit's kind of gay. Anyway, when you, when, if you can't get the ball off that guy, what you should really do is chuck a thumb in his ass and he'll let go. A bit like a, a pit bull in that sense. Um, but kissing a bloke is gay. Unless you're kissing a, a bloke like after you've won a game and, or, or on a night out and you're both drunk, that's fine. That's not gay. But, but uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, though, being naked with another man, that's fucking gay. Unless it's after a game and it's in the showers... But, again, if you were to touch that naked man and on any of his privates, that's fucking gay and that's not on. Unless it was like, you know, like a bum slap after a game. If you won the game, that's fine. But just don't do any of that actually gay shit. Just recontextualize all of the gay actions into a sporting environment and it becomes straight. <laughs> so what I'm hearing here is, is from rugby players is if there are four balls in the room... That's fucking gay. But if you put five in a room and one of those balls is like a rugby ball, that becomes straight. I think it's how rugby science works. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, of course this shit was going to happen. Of course it was going to happen. Isn't it also, it's a, it's a big uh, problem in Australia where all of the, none of the sports are gay. There's no gay shit in any of our sports. Uh, I think AFL... This may, this may be incorrect. Maybe Google this. I think AFL still does not have an openly gay player. There's like never been a gay AFL player in Australia, ever. Or that might be incorrect now, but the last time I looked at it, I was like, that sounds fake, but that's true. Which makes AFL the straightest sport of all time. Do we have any gay players? Mm. LGBT players of Australian rules football. Uh, Seeing a lot of women's names there. That makes sense. Uh, Andy Brennan became the first AFL footballer to come out as gay. When was that? While still playing. In 2019. <laughs> so it just happened very recently, right? So there's, there's one bloke out there doing some gay shit. Is he still playing? Um, I believe... He better not be playing oh. rugby. He's, oh, wait, sorry. He's not even AFL. I think he's a soccer, like striker for South Melbourne. Oh, so does he not play AFL anymore? He plays soccer. Well, there he is with the football. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, what's going sorry. On. Football, uh, soccer is also called football. Guys, some live Googling here. We don't do this much on the show. We're, we're learning to get better at it. Um, look, okay. There might be a few gay players out there. I feel bad, like, if you were and came out because there's, like, a huge... I feel like, yeah, people would just be like, oh. Well, that's what I mean. It's like all these fucking rugby players are turning a blind eye to all this other shit that was clearly, like, not okay with most religions. Gambling, uh, binge drinking, domestic violence, drug taking, all that kind of shit mm. is fine, but gay shit is not. It's like 
Okay, cool. If you're a pious religious person, absolutely abstain from whatever your God says is not okay. But abstain from all of it because otherwise you're just being a hypocrite that is actually abstaining because you don't like gay shit. You know? So, you know, if you don't like gay shit, cool, but say that. Don't hide behind a fucking book when a lot of actually very pious religious people would come out and go, okay, cool, well, if you're going to stand up for God, why, why are you wearing that big sports bet logo when you go out there, huh? Why are you wearing that, uh, that 4X gold logo? Why are you playing with him? Didn't he choke a woman? What about that bloke who fucked a dog? I don't think uh, God would be okay with that. I don't know. Hmm. I'm not trying to moralize here, but it's, it's funny seeing hypocrisy. Um, anyway, um, speaking of gay shit, uh, Pink Sauce... Uh, has been going incredibly viral uh, on TikTok. And I wanted to talk about it because uh, th- this is like, this is the beginning of the end, I think. Because TikTok is such a incredible platform for when you want to sell shit, right? Where it seems like anything can go viral. Like I've never seen a source go viral on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, or any of the other social media platforms, but on TikTok, truly anything can go viral. And this woman uh, has created this thing called Pink Sauce that's gone absolutely fucking mental on TikTok, and it's absolutely blown up. And now she's started selling the sauce. Uh, but the problem is when a food product goes viral, you've got to ship it, you've got to make it in bulk. And if you're not Heinz... How the fuck do you do that? Like, if you're just some chick putting ingredients into bottles and then doing the lid up yourself, it's not going to be the most hygienic operation if all of a sudden you go from selling, like, 15 bottles a week to 15,000, you Mm. know? And that's kind of what's happened here. So uh, let's pull up uh, a video here of this pink sauce stuff. Um, (laughs) Because it's incredibly amusing to me, like, what's happened. Like basically, this woman who who is really good at uh, really good at making TikToks about a sauce now has to like package, manufacture, and ship twenty thousand bottles from her fucking kitchen. Pink sauce, and why a lot of people are concerned for the people that have bought this sauce from the lady that makes it on TikTok because the hue of the sauce keeps changing. Every photo, every nice. video, the sauce color looks different, and also she doesn't describe what it actually tastes like. I don't yeah. Know- incredible it's got fentanyl in it for sure like you're gonna have this fucking thing and you're gonna have a seizure this pink sauce stuff is gonna is gonna kill you this pink sauce is the new asbestos you know like everyone's gone we found this new material and it's really good for insulating homes 20 years later cunts are coughing up their lungs and dying because it's full of asbestos this is going to be the the great pink sauce scandal in 2042 it's everyone's going to be buying this pink sauce oh man it's, it's like dragon fruit mixed with ranch you find out later it's got fucking fentanyl in it you, you think you're gonna have like a cool viral tiktok where you put pink sauce on a taco next thing you know you're up in space hanging out with God when actually your parents are standing around you screaming while you foam at the mouth having a seizure. So if it is to promote it, get people to buy it just to see what it tastes like, but she will not describe the taste. She says it's because she cannot describe the taste. I've been hearing... Yeah, because if she was to describe the taste, she'd be like, yeah, imagine ranch if someone dropped it on the floor, but it was like a really dirty floor and then they scooped it up with their hands and put it back into a bottle. And it it still kind of tastes like ranch, but it mostly tastes like floor. It kind of tastes like ranch, not exactly ranch, but basically ranch. Now that people have purchased it and received it, they're noticing that there's a lot of stuff that... 20 US dollars a bottle. It's like 30 bucks Mm -hmm. for a bottle of fucking sauce. Nice. It's really sketchy with the bottle. The nutrition facts seem to be off. It says there's 444 servings. Some of the... 444 servings per container. Now, that's just a lie. See, that's what I really want uh, in something that I'm ingesting is like just the nutritional info to just be fucking fake. I, want, I, want, I don't want my nutritional info done by a nutritionist or someone who had anything to do with the manufacturing or the ingredients of my product. What I really want is some bitch who, who, who believes in angel numbers. And, and, and instead of putting actual ingredients, they go, oh, if I put uh, 444 servings per container, that will help me sell more bottles. <laughs> Meanwhile, some fucking toddler is having a seizure on the floor because you got your fucking sodium ingredients wrong. Some diabetic is foaming at the mouth because you put 
Uh, you put one, one, one grams of sugar in there. Ingredients are spelled wrong. The nice. website also just seems so poorly put together. Like, what is this? Why does it say this? It's literally like $20 for a bottle, and a lot of people are now worried that this creator is going to be facing lawsuits. Okay, what's the ingredients? Water, sunflower seed oil. It's, this is giving you cancer. Raw honey, distilled vinegar, garlic, pitaya, pink Himalayan sea salt, uh, dried spices, lemon juice, milk. Dude, she's shipping out milk through the fucking mail. Citric acid. Contains sunflower seed oil, milk. Man, you don't want... But the thing is, on her website, it's got a image that says featured products. It doesn't say anything about milk. It says the dragon fruit, honey, sunflower seed oil, chili, and garlic. That's it. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put milk in there either. If I'm trying to sell... Uh, what is it? Four hundred and forty-four thousand bottles, because I believe in angel numbers. I wouldn't put I wouldn't put milk on the big container, you know, on my on my list of ingredients and and advertised features. I wouldn't go. Oh, we're going to ship it in the middle of summer in America, and, we, and there's milk in it, <laughs> dude. You're going to be shitting for days if you have this stuff. The sauce was also arriving in the mail in these bags. They were not like boxed up with bubble wrap, and we're talking about liquid sauce here. So obviously, some people were receiving them literally exploded. It's oh my honestly God. so sad. I'm really rooting for small businesses, but when it comes to food, you need to be careful with what you're buying Gross. and the safety and everything. We need to. Yeah, look, I'll say this. I love small businesses. I'm a small business, okay? I'm not a massive operation. I'm an independent small business. When it comes to food, I will not be supporting small businesses. Small restaurants, right? Small businesses where they make it and then they give it to you. Cafes, little street vendors, stuff like that, you know? I am not going to be getting some woman to post me milk in the fucking mail. It's not going to happen, all right? I'm not doing that. And I'm certainly not supporting a small TikTok business that specializes in creating food that looks good. I'm not saying it looks like it tastes good. I'm saying that it looks good. This is just like, uh, remember when all those, all those fucking cafes were doing crazy milkshakes for Instagram? Oh, yeah. And like on, in the video, of, oh, my God, that looks amazing. There's a donut in it. There's fairy floss in it. There's chocolate sauce everywhere. And then you get it in real life and it's just a fucking mess to take a photo of, but then actually trying to eat the stuff is horrible. Yeah, see, that doesn't Same even thing. it doesn't even look appealing to me. Like, it looks very cool and creative, but I'd never order that. No, no. Like, I don't want to... It looks like fucking paint is what it looks like. It looks like pink paint that they're putting all over. It looks like it tastes like chalk and dirt. Not around it. Pink sauce for $30 as well. Um... But good on it. Now now Forbes has done an article on her uh, as well about this entrepreneur. This is what happens when you go unexpectedly wa- wa- viral. Viral. Because a lot of these, like, governments now are looking at these, like, government agencies are looking at this woman selling, you know, I don't know, 10,000 bottles or whatever she sold and going, all right, cool, now you're a big business and that means you're, we're going to have a look at your fucking kitchen and see how you're actually making this stuff. Uh, in this article, it basically just says the same as the video that you were listening to before, just all the concerns, one definitely being the taste. <laughs> so the taste is just horrible and changes every bottle. Yeah, and the question is like, why would you put something random in your mouth just because someone said so? I mean, isn't that, isn't that what happens after you meet someone at a nightclub? A lot of people <laughs> doing that. Um, <laughs> guys, I'm touring loosebeers.com. I'm going all over the country. The tour starts uh, next month in August. Uh, we've got uh, Melbourne. Uh, those shows are sold out. The shows are actually uh, are selling like crazy. Uh, so if we don't have any tickets now, uh, it's time to get them. We're going to add some Melbourne shows, so stay tuned. Uh, we've got uh, Ballarat, which is selling absolutely terribly, horribly. I've sold four tickets in Ballarat, so it's time to fucking buy them. That show is coming up, all right? Every show other than Ballarat is selling really, really well. Uh, We've got Gold Coast shows. Uh, That one's almost full. We've added a third Brisbane show, and that one is almost sold out again. Thank you very much, Brisbane. I love Brizzy. Sydney, uh, the Saturday show has like 10 seats left. The second one has like 20. Uh, Newcastle show is almost full. That one has like 12 left. Perth has like 60 left. 
Um, Adelaide, we just added Adelaide, and that one has 20 left. So uh, these uh, shows are really, really filling up, and I would highly recommend getting them. We've also got Geelong that has like uh, 50 left, so that one's uh, got a few left, but uh, that'll go as well. Um, and yeah, grab your tickets now. We're looking forward to the tour. We kind of locked in the whole team uh, just this week, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and if you, if you don't have your tickets now, uh, it's time to uh, fix that because you're going to regret missing out. This episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Uh, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0, the best ball bag trimmer in the game, manscaped.com. They've got a bunch of personal grooming uh, products that are really, really great uh, that I use all the time. They've got nose hair trimmers. They've got uh, uh, finger uh, trimmers. They've got like finger grooming kits that I take on like tour nail, with me. Nail clippers. Nail clippers. <laughs> what, they're finger clippers, yeah. If you really want to remove a finger, Manscaped is for you. No, they don't do that. Unless you use their product wrong. Uh, fingernail trimmers, uh, and they're really good. They come up with like a file and tweezers and all that kind of stuff, everything you need. I take it on tour with me. It's really good stuff. What else can I say? Support the brands that support the show. Uh, Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Uh, I might uh, die today, Rosie. Why I, might, is that? Uh, I might get mauled to death by a dog. Uh, oh yeah, me too. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's terrifying, right? So we're actually supposed to be filming bi monthly ball today, but we can't because there's a lot of noise that I I'm hoping you guys are not hearing on the mics. Um, but uh, there's across the road from me, right? Or, or my neighbour has pulled down the fence and they're replacing the fence, which is great, new fence, whatever. Uh, but the people building the fence, I'm going to say this quietly because if I can, I can hear them, they can hear me. They've got. They've brought three of the most terrifying fucking dogs I've ever seen in my life, uh, mm. and they are not friendly. Now, you guys know me. I love a dog. My dad has a dog. He's a trainer. He brings his dog to work. The dogs that they've brought to work are more like enforcers than, than mm. dogs, right? And because there's no fence now because they've pulled it down, they're just roaming around my backyard. Bobby is like, oh, man, some friends. I want to hang out. And I'm trying to explain to her that they don't want to hang out. They want to kill you. I, went, I left my house. And, and there's one lovely little staffy dog uh, that I met. And he's a cute little thing. But there's one, like, massive. I don't even know what it is. Great it looks Dane. like a Great Dane cross yeah. with something that. Like one of her. Like Bobby. <laughs> yeah, like a, like a beast. A scary toddler mauling creature. Something you should never have in your house. Like Bobby. And. I went up to it, or it went up to me, rather. I didn't go up to it. And uh, I gave it my hand to sniff, and it just starts growling at me. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm going to die. Rosie, what happened when you came into work? <laughs> Sarah, by the I... way, I didn't know this was happening today. I knew the fence was being replaced at some point, but they didn't tell us, oh, they're coming on this day. So I pulled up this morning, and the fence was down, right? So the, they came up to the side of my car, both, like, both big dogs. The big, like, Great Dane and... The massive, like, yeah. English staffy came up to my door and the Great Dane looking dog jumped on my car door <laughs> on the driver's side where I was supposed to come out. Oh, and I'm no. like, oh, fuck. Like, I can't get out of my car. Like, I am way too scared. And Lewis was nowhere around. And then also the two, like, tradies that were there, they didn't even call the dog. <laughs> They're like, yeah, they it, just they it. just let it like <laughs> jump on my car door and the other one both barking and yeah. I'm like bark I like cannot get out. Luckily the two like trainees like left and the two dogs followed them and I was like fuck I'm just gonna get inside. Yeah, so this might be the last episode, guys. Um, and uh, with with Keelan's tragic and violent and painful death, um, this might be the end of the show. Um, so yeah, I don't know I don't know what the fuck's happening. It's a, it's the scariest looking dog I've ever seen and Bobby just keeps looking at it. And she's friendly. She's like, oh, man, I want to hang out with the new friends. And the dogs come right up to, like, the glass door. And it's just, like, growled in her face, going, fuck you. And then pissed, like, right in front of the door. This is my house now. And uh, we're going to have to accept that, I think. Mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm, never, I'm never leaving this office. So, um, man, Rosie's going to be doing a lot of overtime tonight. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can't leave. Um, what else has been happening? Oh, I... Um, uh, your documentary actually was in a film festival. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's the film festival called? It's called Melbourne Documentary Film Festival. And nominated for an award? Nominated for two awards, actually. Two awards. Filmmaker Rosie here. She's going to yeah. be in Sundance next. <laughs> I don't know. I, I know the, the, the most 
basic things about film festivals. Sundance, I know, is a good thing. Mm. Sit down. Um, but I uh, ended, I ended up uh, attending the screening, right, and I mm-hmm. had a fucking horrible day. I had an awful oh. time. Great time <laughs> at the screening. Okay. Really enjoyed your documentary. Everything before and after was horrific, right? I oh, woke no. up late because uh, my, my face is fucked, right? So I woke up late and I'm like, oh, no, I have to leave now. And uh, I was planning on getting the train there. Didn't have time to do that. I got a fucking $80 Uber. <gasps> oh, no. But it was important to me because it was important to you. So I'm like, I'm going, right? What a so that was awful. Bus. Uh, but I did have time to make myself breakfast, uh, which was good. I made a shake, right, that I have. And I'm like, man, as long as I uh, make this, I'll be fine. Because I woke up late, so I didn't really have time for breakfast. Now, uh, while I did have time to make breakfast, I did not have time to eat it. So I made it and I left it at home. Uh, and then I left. And then I I thought, oh, it's all right. I haven't eaten. I'm going to get there right on time. I arrived like two minutes after they started screening. But I'm like, oh, that's fine. There are only short documentaries. This thing will go for half an hour. That's sweet. No worries. I can deal with that. So I sit down and I'm watching these documentaries. And you know what it's like when you show up for for your mate, right, for a thing, but there's other people you got to sit through? You know what that's like, right? Some of them are great. But it's like, you know, if you've got kids and you go to their school play, it's like, oh, I'm going to cry when my son gets on stage. But all these other little fucking rats, I don't want to watch them sing terribly. <laughs> My child is a beautiful singer. He sings from the heart and the soul. These other little fucking gremlins don't know what they're doing and they're off pitch, right? So I'm sitting there. I mean, that's right. It'll only go for half an hour. <laughs> fucking two and a half hours later, the Q&A starts. I'm like, oh, Q&A. <laughs> now, Rosie's questions were great. She answered everyone incredibly well. These other fucking gremlins yammered on a bit too long. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I finally get out and I'm about to fucking pass out. And then I had to talk to everyone and say, well done. And meet all these other people that I, that I also knew through Rosie. And be <laughs> nice and hang around for a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to fucking leave immediately. But I was being supportive. And then I bump into someone that I know. Oh, the worst. So he's like, oh, I'm like, oh, we should go out for dinner afterwards. My breakfast. And he's like, oh, I'm not really hungry. I went, we should fucking go out somewhere we can sit down. I'm doing those ones. What about somewhere we can sit? He goes, oh, yeah, I might get coffee. I'm like, all right, I'm going to pick a fucking restaurant that also has a coffee machine. So we find this one place and I make the, I just make a huge fucking error. I'm starving at this point. And also I'm restricted because I can only eat very soft things. Yeah, of so course. Like, all I can eat is like pasta. So me on like an eight hours of eating nothing, I order a fucking carbonara and a coffee. And I eat that thing in about 20 seconds <laughs> and I feel immediately even worse. Just like, oh, oh you know no. what make me, you know what would be a good start to my day? Eight hours late, egg oh. and cream and milk and pasta and then <laughs> also a really big coffee. That'll make me feel fucking great. I can't even remember your film. I felt so awful. Oh, no. I had to delete it from my brain because, it, because, because if I didn't delete the memory of your film, I would have associated it with how awful I felt. Then the next day you would have come in and be like, what, did, did you like the film? Or did you go, no, it made me feel like shit. <laughs> made me feel horrible so then the entire ride home I'm just trying not to vomit right now I didn't get the Uber back because there's no way I'm doing that again but also it's not the best experience to be catching the train home to Frankston at night it's not fun oh no right? no way uh, but, it, but it's okay because on the bright side, at least by the time I got halfway there, they cancelled all the trains and I had to get on replacement buses. The things I did for you, all right? Funny, ungrateful Rosie here. I'm getting on fucking buses at night on to, to Frankston and I had to sit in front of this cunt muttering to himself and to the side of this cunt playing 
Australian rap through his phone, which is the way it should be played, is through your phone on a fucking bus. But I am, uh, I don't want to put my headphones on because they're noise cancelling, which is great for a plane, terrible in a dangerous situation. You know, that's how Keelan died. Um, so I'm listening to this dude, these two dudes literally freestyling on the bus. They're fucking spitting the worst bars that I've ever heard in my fucking life on the bus for 40 minutes while I feel like I want to stand up, walk over to them and vomit all over them just to feel something good. And then the guy behind me is muttering to himself about murdering them. So I felt like turning around and going, <laughs> let's join forces, but I felt a bit I felt a bit sick in my tummy. Um, and this dude then, thank God, stops freestyling. By the way, the worst, the worst freestyling I've ever heard to the point where even his friend kept going, dude, you keep saying the same word again and again. You're not rhyming at all. You're just saying the same word again. That's not what freestyling is. And he would go, no, 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 I can do it. And then would just continue to do the same thing with the same fucking word. I wanted to grab the, that little fucking hammer that breaks the glass and use it on his fucking head. It was insufferable, right? The guy behind me would have joined in and lied for me to the police and gone, no, he didn't do it. Right? Then he, thankfully, he stops freestyling and he starts calling his mother to beg for $25 for what he called lunch. It's 9 p.m. All right? Now, I'm ridiculous for having breakfast at 6 p.m., but he doesn't know what fucking time it is. He starts asking for $25 for lunch. A lot of money for lunch. Yeah. 25 bucks, right? And then I had to listen for another half an hour. Come on, mum, 25 bucks for lunch. I haven't eaten all day. And I want to stand up and go, you know nothing about not eating all day. I had a fucking carbonara for breakfast and now I'm going to vomit and shit myself at the same time. How dare you speak my people's struggles in vain, right? I need 25. Please, mum, I need 25. Come on. I just, I'm almost home. I'm really hungry. I need $25 for lunch. Anyway, literally half an hour of convincing. She finally lets up and says, okay transfers him the money, he hangs up and he goes, cool, man, that should be enough to get us a small bag of weed. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought, sucked in, mum, sucked in. The worst, the worst, I had the worst day ever. The documentary was great, but Thank everything you. around it was the <laughs> fucking worst. Um, can people watch it online? Mm, no, yeah, I don't think so. It's only in film festivals. You yeah, know, it's a real indie documentary. You guys wouldn't get it. If it gets released, it gets disqualified. You can't enter it into festivals, I think. Right. Okay. So cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Awesome. There was uh, there was one documentary in there that I wanted to talk about. I just remembered there was one about uh, homeless youth in New Zealand, mm. and it was very interesting. It followed them for like seven years, I think. Yeah, seven years. And it was like filmed all these homeless kids and a couple of adults that were homeless and then seven years later checked in with them. And it was a lovely, like, heartwarming documentary. Some of the kids sorted out their lives, some of them didn't, and it kind of showed, like, the difference between trying to improve your life and not and also the struggles of being homeless and poverty and, and uh, the failures of the system and all that kind of stuff. Really good documentary. But there was one character that really resonated with me and it was this incredibly morbidly obese guy uh, who was homeless and um, he was the most fucked out of all of them. Mm. He was doing drugs every day. He was a full-grown adult. A lot of the other guys were teens, so he'd been on the street for a long time. So kind of guy where at the start of the documentary, you're like, oh, man, am I going to have to watch this guy die on the street? This is going to be sad. Mm. Awful situation, right? Um, but then at the end, he almost had his life together the most, right? Yeah, he I think he did. He bounced back the most. And that might have to do something to do with how bouncy he looked. But... He completely rebounded, turned his life around. He started boxing. He mm. started coaching other people on how to, uh, you know, bounce back from homelessness and, and live a productive life. And uh, a lot of these other kids were like, man, when I found my girlfriend, it changed my life. When I found a job and a passion, it changed my life. When I found music, it changed my life. You know what the fat guy did? He got a CPAP machine. 
<laughs> he got a sleep apnea machine because he had sleep apnea that was so fucking awful, he ended up ruining his entire life and ended up on the street. And it was a tiny little part of the documentary. But I heard him say that and I, would, I know exactly how the fuck you feel. And if I didn't have all this other shit, I would have been him. He didn't turn his life around. He started sleeping. And he was like, oh, what am I doing? I should go and get a job. <laughs> That's all he did. He started actually fucking sleeping. And he goes, yeah, I had no idea how much it affected my life. I was a fucking zombie. So I just started doing drugs because it helped me stay awake. I was like, oh, yeah, I get that. So, man, I'm excited for my results. If that guy can go from homeless to, like, boxing coach... Mm. I'm not even homeless. I wonder what's going to happen to me when I get my new fucking head. This is what I'm saying, guys. When I get my new skull, it is over for you. I'm on the CPAP machine and I'm actually doing this podcast without missing an episode. Maybe that's why I kept missing episodes, you know? I was like, oh, man, it's because I'm doing this. It's because I'm doing that. Maybe it's because I really should just be fucking homeless without the CPAP machine. Maybe that's why. It's like, oh, sorry, guys. I, I didn't do the podcast this week. I was trying to not end up on the street because I'm so fucking tired. So, yeah, that resonated with me. But still, it was an awful experience because I was sitting there the whole time going, man, I'm so fucking hungry. When is this shit going to end? Oh, another documentary. Well, that one only went for three minutes. That's good. How long is this one going for? Well, this one seems like fucking 30 minutes. How come this one was so long? Well, all the other ones were like five minutes. What's going on? Oh, good. It's over. Oh, fucking Q&A. Oh, it looks like not all the documentary makers are here. That's good. There's only three of them. Oh, there's a lot of people asking questions, though. Oh, and the host has a couple of questions, too. Fuck. Oh, it's finally over. Oh, man, I can't leave straight away. That would be rude. I've got to talk to everyone. There's a couple of people that I remember. Who's this person? I don't remember them. They remember me. I want to fucking leave. Oh, no, a friend of mine? I don't want to fucking hang out with him. Maybe he's hungry. We could go and get dinner. He's not hungry. I'm going to make him go to a restaurant. Oh, I'll get a carbonara. I feel like I want to fucking die. That's all right. I'll be home soon. Oh, they canceled the bus. Oh, no worries. The bus is almost sometimes quicker. At least there's not many people on the bus. Oh, these two guys don't have teeth and they're friends. Fuck, this is going to be awful. Maybe the guy behind me is going to reach over my, his seat and strangle me to death. I probably shouldn't wear my headphones. Someone will take them. Oh, these guys are fucking freestyling. It's horrible. I want to stand up and grab that hammer and put it through his fucking teeth. Oh, now he's trying to get $25 from his mother. He's obviously going to spend it on drugs. This conversation is going on for 30 minutes. I want to stand up and grab that phone and, and shove it down the bus driver's throat so he crashes and we all die. And then I got home. <laughs> so it's a pretty good night overall. Um, all right, how long are we going here? We, it's time to do the, the emails. Um, guys, uh, podcast at lewespears.com if you want to send in an email, if you uh, need any life advice questions, uh, if you have a funny story to tell me, uh, if you uh, have an insight on something you've been thinking about, send it through to podcast at lewespears.com uh, and I'll do my best to answer it on the show. So uh, we have this uh, here, a quick one, and then we've got a longer one. And we've got this one uh, from Jacob. Uh, fucking with supermarket employees. Now, I like this one, but I have a couple of notes. Uh, hey, Lewis, I love what you're doing with the My Macca's resistance, and I thought I would share my experience of fucking with minimum wage workers. This is really good. So the good thing about <laughs> fucking with minimum wage workers is they're poor, so it's fun. But also they can't really do anything because they have managers around that will stop them. That's where Keelan messed up. He went even poorer than minimum wage and ended up getting stabbed to death very painfully. Um, but the My Mac is at resistance. It's all about just uh, speaking up and confusing people because I'm sick of every time I go through the Macca's drive through they don't say, what can I get you? They instead start with, hi, are you using the My Macca's app today? They're trying to get everyone to download this shit app, right? So I don't say, no, I'm not using it. I say, uh, no, are you? And then they don't know what to do. And I highly recommend it. And hopefully if we can get enough people saying, uh, no, are you in response to, are you, are you using the My Macca's app? Uh, enough people will get really fucking annoyed in the drive through that they'll just stop asking. And that's <laughs> really good for all of us. Did you guys hear that? Stop asking. Um, <laughs> Hey, Lou, what's funny about that? My speech impediment is funny to you? No, uh, no, no. No? Are oh, you laughing at something else? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, hey, Lou, I love what you're doing with the My Macca's app resistance. Uh, when buying alcohol at my local supermarket, the employee checking my ID is required to say, are you in the store by yourself today? See, that immediately is a terrifying question to hear if you're a woman. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, it's yeah. not what you want to hear at like 8 p.m. at night after walk after work. You walk in and the big guy behind the counter is uh, has to go, and are you in the store by yourself today? You know, she's going to go, uh, n- no. I have I actually have six of my cousins. I know I look white, but I'm actually Maori and they're huge. And they're in the car park. And if you t- touch me, they'll fucking kill you. Uh, are you in the store by yourself today? My response is to look around at all the other people shopping and say no. Then when they ask who I'm with, as they'll need to ID them too, uh, I say, oh, I'm not with anyone just by myself at the store today. Confuses the fuck out of them and I get a good laugh when I'm walking out. See, that's that's okay, but I think it can be done better. I think what you could do is uh, when they go, um, hi, are you in the store by yourself today? You should go, no. And then when they say, who else is here? You point to another area of the store and you go, oh, I'm just with my friend here. And then when they look and there's no one there, and then and then you look at them like you haven't just said the most terrifying thing they'll hear that day, and they'll go, uh, "There's there's no one there." And you go, "No, it's my mate Sam over there." Hey, mate, say hello. And then you just look at them and smile, and then they'll just immediately process the transaction. Or another one, you just go, "No, uh, I'm here with this person," and you just point at another customer that you're not with. But then it's going to be a very awkward conversation as they pull over the other person and goes, are you with this guy? And they'll go, no, I don't know who this guy is. So I reckon, yeah, point at like invisible guy and then give them like a really, like one of those smiles where your, your mouth is smiling but your eyes aren't. That would be really good. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, this one, this is good. Need help balancing a hookup on a trip with my parents. Ooh, someone wants to fuck their mum. Uh, amen, please leave me anonymous. Uh, over the past couple of months, I've had uh, a tendency to chat with people over Omegle. This dude loves looking at dicks. Oh, no. It's sad, uh, I'm aware, but quarantine has broken me. Anyway, while I was on there, I found and have been chatting frequently with a girl from Germany. Dude, you hit the Omegle jackpot. You found an actual real girl and managed to transfer the chat away from Omegle. This guy's handsome. Uh, After a while, things started to turn sexual with us constantly flirting and her basically begging me to come to Germany for a meetup. The only reason I'm interested in this is because she's a solid nine. (coughs) Yeah. Nice. (laughs) Nice. Because her personality fucking sucks, but man, she's got a pair of tits that are really nice. You can hang in an art museum. So I have to get the bag while I can. See, that is the superpower of the Australian accent, is that it gives you two points. No matter where, anywhere outside of Australia and New Zealand, if you just walk around talking, like, oh my God, you're Australian, you're just like so much hotter. It happened to me in, uh, in America. I was like, oh my God, I'm like a hot person here. This is really weird. So when I get my new chin and I get over there, Dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to carry like dry sponges in my pocket just to not damage the chairs of restaurants I go to. Um, uh, I have to get the bag while I can. Before you say anything, I'm 100% sure that I am not getting catfished. That's good. Um, we've been FaceTiming for a couple of months, and I even reverse image searched her just to make sure. Uh, flights from uh, America to Germany are fucking expensive. But I managed to bullshit it into a trip with my dad and myself. Okay, that's good. So he's managed to get his parents to pay for the trip. Nice. That's amazing. Come on, Dad. It'll be a fun family holiday. We should go to Germany. He's like, the fuck do you want to go to Germany for? (laughs) Oh, I just love their culture after 1950. Um, So in a few months, I'm going there with my dad and myself. That's nice. About halfway through, I'm planning on meeting her and doing the deed while we're there. The only thing I can't think of is a way to meet her without it seeming sus to him. I've suggested that we book separate hotel rooms because he snores and I hate it. He also knows I have a friend in Germany I may want to meet up with, but I'm planning on spending a couple of days minimum with her alone just to do some things we've been wanting to do. Man, what what are you guys fucking talking about? You have to spend a few days doing a few things you've been wanting to do. This is going to be going to be walking around Germany buying fucking chains and paddles. What do you need a few days to do? (laughs) I do not know. 
man, sounds great. You need a couple of days. Good on you. <laughs> but I also don't want to be the shit son neglecting to spend time with my dad. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, dad. I met this girl and uh, let's just say I'm struggling to walk. She spent a few days sticking some things up me and I, and I, as much as I wanted to, to go to the fucking museum with you, I'm not going to be walking for a while. Uh, he's been waiting his whole life to go. <laughs> he, he's been waiting his whole life. So he, your poor father has, like, been begging you for, for years. Man, the one thing I want to do is to take my son to Germany and, and really experience it with my son. And you've been saying no for years. And the minute some fucking, some chick... Who wants to have sex with you goes, oh, yeah, come to Germany. You're like, oh, let's go, Dad. Walk around by yourself. I've got things to do and people to also. <laughs> Any possible advice on how I can balance the two would be greatly appreciated. Well, you don't want to, you don't want to balance the two. You want to keep those two fucking separate. As I don't want to disappoint either person on this trip. Thanks for reading. Have a shit one. Uh... I mean, look, dude, this comes down to uh, your relationship with your father, right? But if it was me and my dad, I would say, Dad, love you, love Germany, but I've met the hottest German chick on the fucking planet and I want to spend a couple of days exploring myself and her. And he'd be like, son, I'm very proud of you. Go for it. I think you've got to be honest. Or maybe you don't have to be honest. I'm not sure. I mean, you can just say what you've already said. I'm going to go see a friend, right? Mm. Your dad doesn't need to know that you'll be chaining that friend up by the neck and whipping her until she has welts on her or what else, whatever else you have planned. <laughs> maybe the reverse. You don't need to do that. Just say you're going to meet with a friend. You're overthinking it, I think. You're just thinking too hard. You don't want to hurt your dad's feelings, obviously, but just say... Oh, man, my friend wants to take me out to this city out of town. Oh, but the thing is, though, he probably wants to take this girl back to the hotel room that I assume is in the same building as your dad. Why don't you... You could just be like, oh, hey, Dad, this is my friend. And then he'll instantly get... he'll. You know what? If your dad is any is a decent man... You'll introduce this girl and he'll go, I gave birth, I, 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 uh, I created this, my son. I raised him as a child. I put a roof over his head. I kept him fed and clothed and watered and loved and I paid for this entire chip, trip to Germany so that we can bond and I can't compete with that rig. Go, go and fuck her, son. Good luck. Give her one from me. That's what a good father would do. Now, I don't know if he's cool like that or if he's a conservative guy or if he wouldn't approve. If he wouldn't approve, you just have to go get your own hotel room away from your dad, right? I assume you have a job. Save up some money. Well, it's only going to cost a couple hundred bucks mm. for a couple days. You want two days? Don't tell your dad and go, I'm meeting up with a platonic male friend in Germany He's going to take me skiing or snowboarding for two days in, you know, two towns over or whatever. I won't see you for two days. And your dad will organize shit to do. If it's planned in advance, it's fine. And then you go and, and uh, you know, do whatever things you have planned with this woman. And I hope you survive it. That's my advice. Am I missing anything? No. I no? think that's, yeah. Prepare to be disappointed. <laughs> the fact that he's managed to get his dad to pay for him to go get a route, basically, <laughs> <laughs> in another country is so funny. Yeah. Hey, Dad, you know how you've really wanted to go to Germany? Well, I've really wanted to fuck a woman for ages. So why don't we make this a boy's trip? <laughs> why don't we both realise our dream? I can't get any pussy in Australia, but I've met this one girl who might not be real in Germany. 
And I know you've always wanted to spend time with me and Bond, but I've never seen a vagina up close and I would really like to. So let's let's do both of those things. Not at the same time, but just, you know, we'll keep those two days separate, but we'll book a few extra days. Yeah, that's uh, that's what an expensive trip for your father so you can get laid. <laughs> What's that going to cost? A few, like at minimum $3,000. You go all the yeah. way from Australia to Germany. Oh, I think you said the US to a, oh, okay. to Germany. Really? I'm just assuming this guy's Australian. Oh, I don't think he said where he's from. No, Australia to Germany. Flights oh, from wow. Australia to Germany are fucking expensive. But I managed to bullshit it into a trip with my dad and myself. That is so funny. You've gone... You probably... You've probably fucking... Made your, you know what? Maybe you can't tell your dad about this girl because then he'll realize that you haven't, out of the love for your father, gone. I really just want to spend time with your dad and bond. He'll real, he'll immediately go, oh great! So I spent five thousand dollars on pussy for my son, <laughs> and I get to walk around a country that I don't know and don't speak the language of by myself while my while my son goes and fucks someone else. The real reason why he's here. Great. Maybe, maybe I wasn't planning on doing it, but maybe I'll go and see a really high cliff while I'm here. <laughs> yeah, no, you know what? You can't tell your dad because he's immediately going to go, oh, great, I've, this is why you're... I'm here for you, but you're here for pussy. <laughs> yeah, okay, change of plans. you got to go. I met a male platonic friend and he wants to take me skiing for two days. I'm going to go and do that. You should go and do your own thing for two days. So that's fine. Mm. You know, like uh, I've spent two weeks in L.A. with friends and we've gone off and done our own thing. You know, I've gone on tour with people and, and uh, when there's like four of us, not everybody wants to do the same thing. So we're like, all right, well, on this day, everyone's going to go and do their own activity that no one else wants to do. Remember, I went on tour with this one person and they really wanted to see the quokkas. And I'm like, I didn't give a fuck about getting on a boat and seeing quokkas right now. I'm, I want to stay home. So they went off by themselves. So I reckon just do that, man. Just go, oh, some friends my age want to go and do this for two days. And I'm definitely not going to spend two days fucking a girl. The real reason why I came here. And and also have fun with your dad. You've got to give your dad that. Because otherwise he's going to work out that you're actually there for you and not for both of you. That's what I would say, you poor father. But also I couldn't exactly say that I wouldn't do this you know if I were in your shoes <laughs> I would hang out with dad and have a good time mm. but also while I'm there the, it seems like the stars have aligned for this man and he needs to seize the day that's what I think you know because yeah. who else would have like the hottest girl in the world also happen to reside in a place you don't give a fuck about that your dad's been nagging you to go to for years all right, let's go. Mm. For us, Dad. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I that's what I think, um, guys. I'm gonna end it there. If you want more podcast, uh, we're gonna continue on on Patreon here. Uh, that'll be up right now on Patreon, as long as well as a giant backlog of Patreon episodes uh, that are really really great. Uh, I want to talk about the the Kardashians and their and their private jet behavior because it's very funny, um, and that's on Patreon right now. And uh, grab tickets to my tour, loosebeers.com Gap Gear. Uh, extra Melbourne shows are coming, but we're going everywhere else uh, in the country. And uh, I want to see you there, man. They're selling out quick, so get your tickets, and I will see you there. I hope you have a shit one. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching Spearhead Sundays. Here's a little taste of the Patreon episode that is out right now. Out now on Patreon. Have I sent him a photo with my? He vlogs me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? For pedophiles, you know what? Maybe I should use that app. <laughs> I understand why some people will see that post and go, maybe we should her. If you want the full uncensored version with a bunch of stuff that we wouldn't say publicly on YouTube here for fear of getting taken down, you can check it out on Patreon right now. It supports what we're doing and helps us build all of the amazing things that we are currently building in here. So we do need your support. And if you want to come and see me live, the Gap Year Tour is on sale right now. Uh, get your tickets now at loosebeers.com. I'm going all over. Shows are selling out. 
heaps in advance, so get your tickets, don't wait, and I'll see you over on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Thank you very much for supporting what we do. That's how we keep it all spinning. Talk to you next week.